Uqba ibn Amr, he asked the Rasul Sallallahu what will give me success? What will give me safety? And the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he gave three very, very brief replies. Rasul Sallallahu he said, number one, amlik alayka lisanak. Learn how to control your tongue. One day, Umar ibn Khattab walked in the masjid and he saw Abu Bakr radiallahu an holding his tongue. So he just says like, what are you doing? Why are you holding your tongue? He goes, this thing has put me in so much trouble. How many households have been destroyed because of a tongue? How many communities? Imam Shafi has a poem where he says, how many people are in the graveyard because of their tongue? So Rasul Sallallahu he says, amlik alayka. An interesting thing about the Arabic in this is he says alayka, as if it's against you. Protect yourself against this thing that will really mess up your life if you don't control it. Imam Shafi also said, if there's anything that deserves to be in jail for a long time, it's the tongue. So just the first advice is that the aql should be in front of the tongue. What happens often is that the tongue speaks and then we go, oh, what did I just say? The reason a word is called a lafad, in Arabic lafad just means to like throw something, right? Because it's like an arrow. Once you shoot it, you can't get it back. You say something to your daughter, your wife, your brother, your sister one time, the rest of their life they'll remember. You can apologize for 10 years, but it stays there. And that's why Imam Shafi says, the cut from the sword will heal, but the cut from the tongue will never heal. The way we learn how to speak. You know how when you have an infant, a toddler, and we celebrate speech, we're like, the first word, first word, first word, and then they never shut up after, right? So they say the same way we learned how to speak and we focus so much on how to speak, we also need to learn silence as well. You know, remember when we were small, we used to put kids in time out. Time out, don't say anything, just sit there quietly. I think a lot of us adults need some time out, you know what I mean? So learn how to be quiet more, number one. Number two, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, وَلْ يَسَعْكَ بَيْتُكْ Beautiful advice. Make your house enough for you. Meaning, make the house a place that you're comfortable being. Being there, being with your children there, being with your wife there, being with your family. Just make your house comfortable for you, enough for you. Not this mentality that we always have to be outside of the house. No, be at home. There's less fitna at home. You go to the masjid, suddenly back to the house, go back. Be there, be with your family. We all know the incident of ifk. Ifk was when our mother Aisha radiallahu anha was accused of fornication. And rumors about her had spread throughout the community. And we could imagine how that would feel to be someone like Aisha in that state where everyone is talking about something. And then I want you to imagine you're her father, Abu Bakr. Like what would it feel like to be a father of that type of rumor spreading around community? The hadith tells us that Aisha, first of all, didn't find out about the rumor for a while. When Aisha radiallahu anha found out, she immediately asked the Rasul Sallallahu could she go back to her mother and father's house? So Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, yeah, go. When she walked in the door, she was very distraught. And the hadith says, she walked in the house and her mother saw her face and she immediately started to comfort her. But Aisha says, when I walked in the house, I could hear my father on the roof of the house reciting Quran. There's a communal problem with your own family. But where is he at? He's on the roof of his house, and he's reciting Quran. Now that doesn't mean he didn't do anything to try to fix it, but I think sometimes we need to realize that sometimes the most I can do is focus on my relationship with Allah. And that's what he was doing. He wasn't being not active. He was saying, you know what? Maybe this is out of my hands and maybe I need to focus on my relationship with Allah. The third advice that Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, now this is important. Where's our mental focus at? What are we focusing on in life? Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he wants to direct our priorities. The end of this hadith says, Wabki ala khati'atik. Cry over your sins. Now, the only way you'll cry over something is when it's a priority in life and when you focus on it. And so what I feel this hadith does for me is it reminds me that there are a lot of problems in the world right now. Whether they be global, whether they be communal, whatever they may be. But the thing that my heart should be primarily preoccupied with are my sins. How many of you have actually today thought over your sins? I think if we were honest, only a few of us may have actually sat and like thought over them, let alone cry. See, we won't cry over them unless we actually take the first step and mentally prioritize them and think about them. One of the major problems we have is we're focusing on other people's uyub and not our own eh, faults. So let your own faults preoccupy you from the faults of other people. Focus on your own ma'asi, your own sins. So three things, number one, Let's control our tongue. Think about what we say. Number two, be comfortable at home. Number three, focus on your sins. Go to sleep. Think of what, I, what did I do today? And say, Ya Allah, there's a lot I did wrong today. Wrap that up. Don't go to sleep with that staying there. Don't go to sleep with those sins just sitting there. No, before you go to sleep, do that tawbah. Clean those out, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq.